in today's video, I'll be making this awesome little sound uh, bar wave thing, okay? And I did not know what to name it exactly, so that's why, yeah, you name it, okay? And, uh, well, by the way, this video is actually, this is actually a voiceover, you know, for some reason, I actually could not record my voice while recording um, this video. Well, that's because I was using my Chrome was browser was using um, you know my voice. So yeah, apparently I need to use this so that you know you guys can hear what I'm speaking about. And um, the cool thing about this is that well, see, you know it it works just fine you know it like you guys can test the code out you know um, down in the descriptions below or here I was actually running a music okay and um, that's why you can see the sound waves going crazy and um, you know this um, whole thing is actually available um, is actually open source you guys can go check out its code you know um, links down in the description below you guys can you know edit it or make anything out of it um, like uh, I'm working on a game right now where you basically like shout and depending on your shouting uh, You know the bird inside the game kind of goes up and down. It's like a flappy bird game, but you need to shout so over here I actually start coding um, the thing so I made a folder sound wave thing <laughs> And inside that, I start make, uh, typing in the index.html, app.js, and our design.css. Come on, type in the design.css. Yeah, there we go. And I'm basically, um, you know, typing in the title, like basically what we normally do when we um, work on a new HTML project. Basically, you know, write the title, add the title, add the link to the design.css, add the script src, app.js, and um, then save it, and then what? And yeah, as you can see, I was actually looking for a screen recorder, you know, because Bandicam, well, I needed to, you know, constantly turn on the video on and on again and again because it kept turning off after 10 minutes whatever you know um, over here I'm trying to open the console and there we go we have the console open here the inspector basically and uh, well yeah over here I'm actually uninstalling another screen recording app that I installed so <laughs> yeah and then I search P5JS Human. Exactly, that's what I wanted to search. No, I wanted to search for P5JS Audio. Come on, Google, why are you not smart? <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, please don't take it seriously. And over here, I open P5JS.org sound reference. Um, just search it on Google. Uh, the first link would take you to the right place. And over here, as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do with the P5 sound reference. And I'm gonna choose P5.audio in over here. And um, if you, um, I'm going to basically open the duplicate tab, yeah, and go to download. And when we come to download, we are going to scroll down, and uh, yeah, we are going to copy the link to this p5.min.js. We are not going to use p5.js because it's a giant library, and it would take a lot of time for it to load. So yeah, that's why I'm going to use the p5.min.js, the basically the um, compressed form of p5.js and then I'm going to import another file from p5.js which is called the p5.sound.min.js and basically those are the two libraries that we need to make this project and um, the next thing that I'm gonna do um, well I don't even know myself <laughs> what am I going to do next okay the next thing that I'm going to do is um, basically create a container tag um, it's going to be a div basically and um, yeah for the sound bars I'm going to have a lot of divs over here okay you can see since there were so many sound bars just so that's why I need to copy and paste a lot of divs over there as well and um, now I'm gonna put in uh, do the CSS part of it so body and then I'm gonna color the BG background give it a nice dark 
blue navy blue color so yeah I'm basically going to drop the color right on the sweet navy blue spot save it and here we go the nice navy blue color and um, then yeah that's it that's it for the body and um, now I'm going to basically remove the padding and the margin um, from all the um, elements so that you know it, it's a good practice to do that whenever you are starting off with a new uh, design CSS uh, object and then we are going to use box sizing border box so that nothing leaks out um, due to margins and stuff <sighs> and now what I'm going to do is basically design the container tag so I'm going to type in dot container 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 and then I'm gonna type in position absolute height 200 px width well I'm gonna set width to 100% um, 100% well this time we are going to use 100 VW yeah <laughs> that's the same thing but you know why not let's use 100 VW and then I'm gonna make margin auto and center this so yeah top zero and bottom zero and now background um, I'm going to just set it to white so that it's visible and yeah it is visible now and inside this we actually have the divs okay there's a lot of divs actually um, like right there in HD HTML you can see how many divs are there so now we are going to make these divs visible as well so for that I'm going to type in dot contain um, now firstly I'm going to make display flex voiceovers are always so hard so I'm going to type in display flex and then I'm going to type in dot container div and um, now I'm going to set the background of these. I'm going to make the background blue. Yep. I'm going to make the background blue so that we can see it properly. And then I'm going to basically set a height to it, 100px and a width to it as well, 8px. Yeah, that's fine. And now as you can see it looks like a rectangle over here but it's just the you know like the all the different divs stacked against each other and um, yeah now we are going to give it some border radius because border radius always makes everything look good and yeah now you can basically differentiate between each of the divs but now we need to space them out a bit so for that I'm going to firstly align these to the center of the screen so that they are in the center of the screen and now we need to you know spread them out evenly in such a way so that they are in the center of screen while having space in between them so justify content space around and now as you can see they have so much space in between them and not only that but also you know um, it's responsive so yeah you don't need to worry about you know them being like crushed against each other they just are like that and now I'm going to go to the VS code and remove the white color of the background so that it looks better and add a linear gradient red and orange and now when we save it see it almost looks ready now okay now all we need to worry about is the p5.js how are we going to add life to it so for that what I'm basically going to do is um, you know basically going to use a few classes that are already present in the p5.min.js now I was afraid over here that I was um, running out of time as you can see and uh, yeah whatever I still continued making the video and now I'm going to go to app.js and you know the p5.js rule you need to have two functions function setup and function yes you guessed it function draw and it's actually like Arduino you need to have these two functions you know the set set of function basically says the behaviors of p5.js in this project and draw function is basically a function which gets executed over and over you know and um, yeah that's how you basically animate stuff using p5.js not animate stuff you know you can do a lot of animations you know unique animations using p5.js and now I am going to console.log hello and just to show that it gets executed over and over you can see in the console the hello is getting console.logged over and over so many times you can see 300 times so you know it's pretty fast now and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in something in I don't know 
What am I doing? Oh, okay. I guess I'm still explaining what setup and draw means, uh, but I hope you guys understand. Basically, these two functions are predefined in P5JS, and you need to have these. These are like required functions for P5JS to function, and um, that's why you need to add these two functions. Okay, and that's why you need to work with these two functions. You need to write your code in such a way so that you know all your work depends on only these two functions. Now let's stop talking and go to the website um, p5js audio in and I'm going to basically make a variable object called mic okay and inside this mic we are going to import an object from p5js which basically would be having our audio um, input and then the mic.get level it basically returns us how loud is our voice okay I'm going to explain it in more detail in um, you know further so yeah basically what happens in mic is that mic is an object and inside this object there's a you know certain kind of behaviors you know which um, say how the sound is like you know how much amplitude and frequency does it have and mic.start means basically to start recording the voice and mic.get level it basically returns us uh, you know you can see uh, wait you can see this over here this ball over here it um, reacts according to my sound okay and mic dot get level re returns us um, you know decimals which would which uh, you know basically say how loud is our sound is from the threshold of 0 to 1 okay so from 0 to 1 it would say us how loud is our sound and as you can see over here this is returning us a bunch like you know so many real like because it's in the draw function it's returning us a lot of you know um, decimals now these decimals are basically you know how loud is my sound um, according like from 0 to 1 on the scale of 0 to 1 it's basically how how loud my sound is so that's why it is decimal over here and um, you know we are going to work with this we are basically going to multiply this by 100 in order to get the sound from you know uh, from the threshold of 0 to 100 which is more helpful when we are working with audio related stuff and you know I'm going to just shout over here a little bit so that we can see that it's working like we want it to that is we can understand that it's working from 0 to Hundred and you can see there's 19 and 13 present there, which means that it's functioning like we want it to. That is, it's g g getting us the sound um, loudness, you know, on the threshold of zero to hundred. And over here, I'm basically going to, um, you know, make all the divs that I, uh, you know, the sound bars. How are we going to make the sound bars react according to the sound? For that, I'm using document dot query selector all dot container div, and then using dot for each function, which returns us an event variable. Uh, inside this event variable, we basically get. Well, I'm gonna show it to you. Inside this event variable, we basically get the object element or the element object. Okay, um, the HTML element, and that's how we are going to just set a size to it. So e dot style dot height. And you know, we are going to set it equal to, let's say, mic dot get level um, into. Um, since it gives us values from zero to one, um, we could actually set this to px. But um, you know, zero to one it gives us a really small value. That's why I'm going to make it pc. And now when I refresh this. Um, you can see these disappear but when I go like really loud that's when they appear just a teeny bit okay and that's why I'm going to make this px and rather I'll multiply this with 500 so that these work and now when I shout you can see how these react according to my sound now still this is a voiceover I'm just acting okay guys <laughs> and, uh, you know but the thing about this is that you know when I talk you can see all of these bars going um, big, you know like increasing by the same sound, uh, like size that's why i'm going to multiply this by math.random and then i'm going to multiply it by 10 you know you could put any number over here and basically when you refresh it your voice record uh, your thing is ready you know 
the, the project that we are talking we were making is ready and yeah that's how easy it was to make this see that awesome right and um yeah but the thing about this is that you know um you can see like when i go totally silent you know these kind of start disappearing but um, also one more thing that you probably did not see is that how sensitive they were so to decrease the sensitivity i'm basically going to decrease the frame rate to 25. well that's too low yeah i mean that's not too low uh, 30 frames per second would be better anything above 15 frames per second would not be choppy at all and now yeah they look fine yep they look exactly i mean pretty good and now I'm going to go to design.css and change this max height to 10px because you can see when I go totally silent, they just disappear because the height becomes equals to zero. That's why I'm going to set the min height to 10px so that when I go silent over here, you can see that there we have like dots over there. And um, one more thing like that is when I go like really loud, you know um you could see like it kind of leaks out of the screen so for that i'm going to set max height to 90 vh so that it does not go outside the screen and here we have it this uh whole sound recording thing is ready okay and actually i was literally shouting in the video so that you know this would like you know look good but then actually you know um, I realized that I was just being stupid. I shouldn't have shouted so loud, you know, and um, Yeah, whatever over here. I'm basically trying to explain like how I made it So I'm just going to explain again how this is working So basically we import these two libraries p5.min.js and p5.sound.min.js These two libraries basically return us the what our laptops microphone is listening and for p5.js, like I said, you need to have setup function and a draw function. Inside the setup function, I am basically saying that, you know, mic, this object mic would be having our uh, microphone, that is our audio input. And, you know, um, that's what I'm defining over here. And using mic.start, I'm basically starting the recording of the, um, you know, sound so that it starts recording. And over here, frame rate, like it says, it basically depends on how fast this draw function would get executed and then this dot get level it basically returns us how loud our sound is and this document dot get uh, query selector all function it gives us you know like all these elements over here okay all the bars and um, you know that's how we take each bar and you know give them a specific value you know depending on our sound level and that's how these kind of react according to our sound you know and you can actually check this out on my um uh, you know uh, on, in the link down in the description below you know the website is available you can see it working on your phone as well and um you know when you open this website on your phone it would basically ask you for a permission that is if you want it to record the sound or not so you need to basically allow it okay and um, yeah after allowing it you know it will basically um, start working and if you do not allow it if you block it then it will not work okay so yeah you need to allow also you need to make sure that you have your website deployed in an HTTPS website or else this would not work okay now you can see when I reload this it takes a little bit of time to load that's because of the p5.js um, you know, library. The library is pretty big and that's why it takes a bit of time to load. And as you can see, um, now it's working totally fine, you know. And um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff we can actually make with p5.js. In the future, I'll be making a lot of new videos with p5.js because you can do some really creative stuff with p5.js. And you know, like, um, there's so many other youtubers you know um, that may uh, make you know videos on p5.js one of the most famous is the coding train and um, yeah the coding train p5 just search him and you know when his channel would basically come up and you'll see he makes like a gazillion new videos on p5.js like you know you can learn like the whole of p5.js 
from just him because you know he's just the best teacher of like any you know in anything related to javascript literally he has 1050 videos he's an awesome creator you guys should check his channel out you know i learned most of p5js from him you guys can also learn most of p5js from him so now is the end of the video thanks for watching okay um sorry this video was uh, i had to like you know basically give a voice over for this video um but you can check it out live or uh, like i said in the link down in the description below also recommend me a nice screen recording app because you know for free um so that i can make videos thanks for watching like if you like this video subscribe if you love this video